And of course, we are thrilled, pleased, and happy to welcome back our favorite president, Kristen Stewart. światowej premiery filmu Love is Bleeding, w którym gra jedną z głównych postaci. Um, thank you so much everyone for coming tonight and just want to say how excited and honoured we are to be having the international premiere of our film here with all you guys tonight so and thank you to Bella and Ali for inviting us, it's incredible. Um, you're about to watch Love Lives Bleeding and I'm so excited for you all to see it. Um, do you have anything you want to I'm so lucky I got to work with her, I think. Girls aren't really allowed to do whatever they want. I think you did whatever you wanted here. No? Yeah, so thank you to anyone who facilitated that. I'm so lucky I got to work with her, I think. Girls aren't really allowed to do whatever they want. I think you did whatever you wanted here. No? Yeah, so thank you to anyone who facilitated that. I got to work with her, I think. Girls aren't really allowed to do whatever they want. I think you did whatever you wanted here, no? Yeah, so thank you to anyone who facilitated that. <laughs> Girls aren't really allowed to do whatever they want. I think you did whatever you wanted here, no? Yeah, so thank you to anyone who facilitated that. <laughs> Sam film był fantastyczną zabawą, której całkowicie się nie spodziewałam, dlatego film polecam zdecydowanie Waszej uwadze. A całe Q&A i to spotkanie było naprawdę urocze i na pewno na długo je zapamięta. everyone for coming tonight and just want to say how excited and honored we are to be having the international premiere of our film here with all you guys tonight so and thank you to Bella and Ali for inviting us it's incredible um you're about to watch Love Lives Bleeding we shot it in uh Albuquerque in New Mexico back in 2022 so it's wonderful to finally be shared it with audiences you're going to see a wonderful performance from Kristen and Kate <laughs> <laughs> And her co-star Katie O'Brien, who sadly isn't here tonight, but is fucking phenomenal in this, and I'm so excited for you all to see it. Um, do you have anything you want to add? I'm so lucky I got to work with her, I think. Girls aren't really allowed to do whatever they want. I think you did whatever you wanted here. No? Yeah, so thank you to anyone who facilitated that. Woo! Thank you. to a couple of our crew members who are in the audience. So our, our music consultant, Yeet Bogle, our assistant editor, Amy Pettifer, our editor, Mark Towns, and my incredible producers, Oliver Kassman and Andrea Cornwall. And those two will be joining us on stage afterwards with Kristen to answer a few questions. Um, and I hope you all really enjoy. Thank you. <laughs>
Verhältnis zu ihrer Familie durch das Land trampt. In einer kleinen Stadt in New Mexico trifft sie dabei auf Lou. Bitte ignoriert am besten meine Inhaltsbeschreibung des Films, denn wie der Film erzählt wird, vor allem seine Geschwindigkeit, welche Twists er nimmt und wie er Themen wie Ostron spirituell, wird hier der Bezug zum Körper dargestellt und auch seine Grenzen und Zerbrechlichkeit aufgezeigt. Zwar trifft das Drehbuch hier unter Entscheidungen, die für mich nicht 100... for you how like what was it that attracted you so much to the role of Lou I mean obviously you're made for it um, but I wanted you to speak a bit about that role and what you loved so much about it what do you mean <laughs> uh, well I, I, I really I love Rose Rose's personality so much and uh, I think uh, why did I want to make this particular movie. Um, I had a feeling in the room with this person and uh, ultimately like once I actually read the script, um, it's just not, it's just not like super normal to, uh, fuck, how do I answer this? <laughs> um, it's just like not typical of me. How, like what was it that attracted you so much to the role of Lou? I mean obviously you're made for it. Um, but I wanted you to speak a bit about uh, that role and what you loved so much about it. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, boy, I, I really, I love Rose, Rose's personality so much. And uh, I think, uh, why did I want to make this particular movie? Um, I had a feeling in the room with this person And uh, ultimately, like once I actually read the script, um, it's just not, it's just not like super normal to, uh, fuck, how do I answer this? <laughs> um, it's just like not the, what we, I mean, I was going to say, I felt like you were sort of basically just incredibly generous and kind of up for doing whatever. I really wanted to work with you. I yeah. Mean, I would, No, but like the genuine answer is like, if I were to like answer a, a, a large scale sort of like mission statement regarding the movie, I could generate that. But to be honest with you, I just wanted to go, what do you want me to do? <laughs> And I think to me, it just seemed very obvious that Kristen would be amazing at being a sort of like updated version of a sort of brooding film noir anti-hero who like is haunted by her past and smokes too many cigarettes. <laughs> so yeah, I was very glad she was up for it. I've played a lot of aspirational characters that I don't actually believe in. And so this one was like, oh wow, this person like exists. <laughs> yeah, and they have like a family and like a sort of hateful history and reasons to uh, like put a good feeling towards something outside of themselves versus uh, self-love, which is such a predominantly fake idea. Like, love yourself and then everyone else will. She was perfect. <laughs> I can see that now better. Uh, boy, I, I really I love Rose Rose's personality so much, and uh, I think uh, why did I want to make this particular movie? Um, I had a feeling in the room with this person, and uh, ultimately, like once I actually read the script, um, it's just not it's just not like super normal. <laughs> it's just like not what we. No, I mean, I was going to say, I felt like you were sort of basically just incredibly generous and kind of up for doing whatever. I really wanted to work with you. I mean, yeah, now, 
No, but like the genuine answer is like, if I were to like answer a, a, a large scale sort of like mission statement regarding the movie, I could generate that. But to be honest with you, I just wanted to go, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and I think to me, it just seemed very obvious that Kristen would be amazing at being a sort of like, updated version of a sort of brooding film noir anti-hero who likes haunted by her past and smokes too many cigarettes. <laughs> so I was very glad she was like, I played a lot of aspirational characters that I don't actually believe in. And so this one was like, oh wow, this person like exists. Yeah, and they have like a family and like a sort of hateful history and reasons to like put a good feeling towards something outside of themselves versus uh, self-love, which is such a predominantly fake idea that love yourself and then everyone else will. And I'm like, wait, this freaks me out. I don't like this. Like she's like willing to actually be present in every moment. It, it is an impressive feat. Um, it's just like not no, I mean I was going to say I felt like you were sort of basically just incredibly generous and kind of up for doing whatever I really wanted to work with you I mean, yeah, like, no but like the genuine answer is like if I were to like answer a, a, a large scale sort of like mission statement regarding the movie I could generate that but to be honest with you I just wanted to go what do you want me to do? <laughs> and I think to me it just seemed very obvious that Kristen would be amazing at being a sort of like updated version of a sort of brooding film noir anti-hero who likes haunted by her past and smokes too many cigarettes. <laughs> so I was very glad she was up for it. I've played a lot of aspirational characters that I don't actually believe in. And so this one was like, oh wow, this person like exists. Yeah, and they have like a family and like a sort of hateful history and reasons to uh, like put a good feeling towards something outside of themselves versus uh, self-love, which is such a predominantly fake idea. Like, love yourself and then everyone else will. And I don't want to leave out Tracy O'Brien because unfortunately she, she can't be here today and I know that it was kind of like a, a very, like you had Kristen in mind very early on, if I understand correctly, but then um, how was it to find Katie and how was it to work with her? I mean, it, it, was, it was quite difficult to find. I mean, when she appeared, obviously, we were all kind of uh, incredibly relieved and kind of, you know, she was perfect for it and, and it all worked out wonderfully, but it was, it was quite hard to find. We spent, you know, that was one of the bigger production sort of things. We set out, I was saying to these guys, we must find an actual bodybuilder who's also an amazing actor. I was like, this would be easy. <laughs> but, yeah, because we, we had several actors put themselves up for the role and lots of people who were kind of fit and they're like twiglets compared to the real thing. And I mean, I just think that scene that we've done in Vegas where she's on competing, where she completely shredded and dehydrated for that. And she, the, the other women on stage with her, they're real bodybuilders that have just competed that weekend. And the fact that you really can't tell that she's the actor in the lineup is is incredible and testament of all this work that she put oh in. And she was there every single day and not like, wait, this freaks me out, I don't like this. Like, she's like willing to actually be present in every moment. It, it is an impressive feat, you know. Yeah, it's amazing. And, you know, I mean, obviously, aside from the fact that she's, you know, got this amazing physicality, I think what was incredible about her performance is, like, just the sort of, like, vulnerability and sort of softness and dorkiness or something. I don't know. She just brings so much sort of nuance to it. Um, and that duality is just very exciting. So we we're very lucky to find her. Yes, indeed. And um, you, um, Oliver Kasman and Andrea Cornwell, You've also worked on the previous film. In fact, um, you kind of um, have your, you're having your breakthrough all together. Um, could you uh, talk what uh, talk about what it meant to uh, come on board for this film uh, or develop it together um, as as the kind of like next step? Because I understand that the first film is a big film, but this one is like big. <laughs> So how was that transition for you as a team? I mean, Andreas, you know, made big movies before as well. Um, you know, for me, it was 
uh, obviously a huge privilege to, to have you know that bigger budget and that bigger canvas for us to be working with you know such incredible people. Your budget goes up. It doesn't necessarily mean your spending power goes up by the same amount. And you know the more money you have, the more expensive it is to do things. Um, but it was still an adjustment. I remember um, I was living with the DP Ben Forsman, who's let's I mean. Extraordinary work, absolutely. <laughs> and, and Ben, you know, Ben, uh, Blinky Ben, I call him, uh, and I encourage you all to do the same. Um, he, 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 he came up, you know, from being a spark and, and worked his way up, and he knows things inside out, but he's also a bit of a grafter, and we were sharing a house um, that had been recently done. And Jump, what, jump from a uh, nurse nun to a bodybuilder? Yes. Um, I mean, arguably, I think they're kind of both sparking up similar trees and that they want to sort of transform themselves in different ways. Um, but they're spiritual sisters in that sense. I don't know, I think I just after doing St. Maud, I wanted to try something different in some ways and maybe look in a genre I hadn't. And I just thought it'd be really interesting and fun to do something about a very, very muscular woman. Yes, I'd love to find her. Yes, indeed. And um, you, um, Oliver Kasman and Andrea Cromwell, you've also worked on the previous film. In fact, um, you kind of um, have your, you're having your breakthrough all together. Um, could you uh, talk what uh, talk about what it meant to uh, come on board for this film uh, or develop it together um, as as the kind of like next step? Because I understand indeed, and. Um, you, um, Oliver Kasman and Andrea Cromwell, you've also worked on the previous film. In fact, um, you kind of um, have your, you're having your breakthrough all together. Um, could you uh, talk what uh, talk about what it meant to uh, come on board for this film? Dude, Rose was allowed to make a big, huge yeah. movie. Like, come on, it's so cool. <laughs> Like the plant, yeah. yes. Well, yes. Yeah. So, love lies bleeding is is the name of a plant. This kind of amaranthus kind of, and I don't know if people have seen it. It's like this crazy sort of big seed head thing with these big sort of sort of beautiful kind of ugly sort of voluptuous, but yeah. scary yeah. kind of weird seed head pod things. Yeah. Um, I think initially it sort of briefly toyed with trying to steal the title of a book that's in the film called Macho Sluts. So it was like a brief working title for a while, and then that <laughs> didn't kind of work. And so it's like you know we need a certain level of melodrama. And then I heard about that plant and was like, that's, that's the one I guess. But it was called that from the beginning, wasn't it? The very first deck was Love Lies Bleeding. Oh yes, no, don't worry, it was always officially called Love Lies Bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> so you should... Love Lies Bleeding. It's a plant. I thought she came up with that. <laughs> there's a song, there's a film. No, I think it's a bit of a metaphor. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. There's a song, there's a film, there's a film. I think it's a bit of a metaphor. Yeah, me too, me too. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Please spread the word. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for thank you all. Please spread the word. <laughs>